In this video, I'm going to go through what I call basic web page editing. And if you don't know about web pages and how they're programmed, I need to clarify what I mean by basic web page editing. What I mean is old style web pages used to be just in something called HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Now, that's not really informative uh, that it's hypertext markup language, but basic HTML is just for what we call a static web page, where you open up a web page and the information just sits there. There's no interactivity, there's nothing moving around or, or jumping. Actually, you could uh, have that with a basic web page, some basic things. Um, but when somebody says a basic web page, they mean static HTML. Static means there's no interactivity uh, or anything like that. Uh, some things that uh, are things that I'm now just learning or are, are a little bit beyond me are uh, web pages that are more involved in uh, involve things called CSS, which are cascading style sheets. Uh, this is when you want to de define an overall look of a website where one style sheet defines what happens on many different pages. Uh, that's more involved, and, and it's something that I'm not good at. Um, also, some things that uh, are much more complicated are, are things like uh, Java or JavaScript um, can, can bring interactivity, and a lot of games uh, are written in Java. Uh, and there's a difference between Java and JavaScript, but that's that's more complicated. Um, something else that's more involved in most web pages these days that you go to is what's called PHP programming, along with a database that stores all the information. So uh, these days, most uh, web pages that are modern web web pages are done on what's called a LAMP sort of platform. LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, that stores the uh, SQL databases with all the information, and um, PHP is the P, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, there's also uh, a similar platform called the WAMP web server, which is Windows, Apache, MySQL and PHP. Basically, what uh, you know, Linux is the operating system, or Windows, or you could use a different operating system. Apache is what controls the interface between the computer and the internet. So, how does the internet know how to get into your computer, and how does your computer control who gets in and what they can get access to? So, that's the Apache part. MySQL again is, is uh, holds databases full of information. For example, I'm uh, the co-editor of a journal, and all of our journal information is stored uh, in a combination of PHP programming and MySQL databases. It holds information about the authors, the issues, uh, the, con the contents, and where everything is located. Um, so that's the MySQL. I'm just going to show you a basic web page editing idea and show you a cheap, free, easy way to do this. Now, what I have here is a, a very, very basic uh, web page. So this is um, two files. Don't worry about the thumbs.db. That's actually something that uh, you're, not, you're not normally going to see. But here I have index.htm, which is just a basic web page, HTML, uh, and an image that is used in this web page. And let me show you how you can edit something if it's just a basic web page like this. So what I'm going to be using to uh, edit these basic uh, websites, there are a lot of choices out there, but uh, if you're not doing anything fancy, go with something simple and free. And what I'm going to be using is a free program called Composer. Composer. And the version I actually like to use is, as if you watch my videos, I like uh, programs that are called portable apps. These are free programs that don't install any junk on your computer, uh, nothing in your registry, and you can run these from a pen drive or you can run them from your, from your desktop computer either way. And so if you want to get Composer, go to www.portableapps.com. 
Com, or you can just Google Composer, but make sure that you don't pay anything for it because this is a, a free open source program. If you go to Portable Apps, you'll get the portable version that you can either install on a pen drive or run from your desktop computer or your laptop. The, bi the big benefit is when you want to uninstall the program, all you do is delete the folder. So uh, that's what I like about these programs. It doesn't... Um, slow down your computer by messing with your registry and things. So download a copy of Composer and run it. And uh, so basically if, if you get the portable apps version, what you do is you just extract the uh, Composer into a folder. And I called it Composer Portable. And you're going to see three directories here, a help file, and this file called ComposerPortable.exe. Uh, in order to run it, you just double click on that program and it'll open up the Composer window here. And this is a, uh, a kind of editor that has a few different modes, just like any standard HTML editor. And I'll show you uh, all three modes here. Before we start messing with our HTML file, before we start edi editing it, let me show you a, a trick that... Uh, or a tip, something that I always like to do. Remember we had our, our three files here, an image, the HTML file, and this thing just saves uh, pictures of you know, cover images. But don't worry about the thumbs.db. You may or may not have that on your computer. Um, before we start editing the HTML file, I always like to make a copy of it and um, kind of to archive it. So if we goof something up, uh, we can always go back to the old version. So you can just, um, you know, hit Control C and Control V on a Windows computer, and that made index-copy.html or .htm. Uh, what a lot of people will do, you don't have to do it this way, is just uh, keep the exact same name, index.htm, and then .old. And I get a warning if I change the extension, it might be unusable. Well, of course, I don't want it to be usable. Uh, this is just an archive. Uh, if you want to, if you make some horrible mistake when you're editing, then just delete the new one and then rename the old one just to .htm, and you'll be back where you started. For beginners, this is this is something I highly recommend. Uh, I goof things up all the time. Even for advanced people, I recommend doing this. So uh, in order to open this up, let's go here to Composer. We just want to hit the Open button here for Open a Local File. And you can then navigate to where you need to go. Um, but I'm already in that folder. And just click Open the uh, HTML file. And this is a file that I use uh, for the journal that I work for. And this is like a little opening welcome page uh, when you go to the journal. And it gives some information about the journal. And this is a little uh, welcome message that I added recently that's, that told people, we're looking for some back issues of the Review of Regional Studies. But let's, let's just edit this. This is going to be very familiar to most people. It's just like you're editing any kind of document here. This is what you call a what you see is what you get uh, editing window. Sometimes we abbreviate that WYSIWYG. So what you see is what you get. People pronounce that WYSIWYG. Um, and what that just means is you're looking at roughly what this is going to look like in a browser. And if you want to edit something, you can just highlight things and you can delete them, right, to get rid of them. Nothing nothing strange there about that. Um, you can also just type things. So what if we wanted to type a message? You know, we are looking for a few. Now this is this is hard to see right here because it's in black on a background of blue. So what if you didn't want that black on a background of blue. Well, you can highlight it. And then you can change the color. Here are a couple of uh, colors. This is the background color, the blue. This is the text color, the uh, black. Click on the black, and then we can choose 
you know, yellow or red if we really want it to stand out here. And now it's red, but we say maybe that's too small for people to see. How do we make it bigger? Well, you see the little uh, A with a down arrow, A with a big arrow. Click A with a big arrow and that will make it bigger. Uh, or up arrow, A with a down arrow will make it smaller. Uh, we can change to different kinds of formatted uh, text here, headings, regular paragraph text, or we can hit underline or italics, all kinds of different things you can do here. This is standard to any kind of, of text editor that you might be looking, uh, looking through. Um, other similar kinds of simple things that you can do, what if we wanted to add a picture? Well, let me add a picture here. Suppose I wanted to show people what an old version of our journal used to look like, because what we were looking for is a, a few back issues of the journal, right? So what if I wanted to add a, an image of what the journal used to look like? Well, here's the way I would do it, is I would go into that little um, directory that has the image, the cover.jpg, that's this, this picture over here on the right. Um, what if we wanted to add another image? Well, I'm just going to drag an image file from another folder into this folder. And it's called 29.2.0 underline page 1.jpg. Let's go back to our composer editor here. And there's a little uh, button here that says image. Let's click it. See what happens. A lot of this is just self-explanatory. Play around with it. See what happens. Image location. Let's click the little open folder here. Um, let's see. It doesn't see that image. Just a second. Let me see what's going on here. All right. I figured out what was going on here. I was actually editing the live version of the web page here instead of um, instead of looking at the copy I had made to, to use on this video. Well, that's fine. Uh, it's no problem. Again, I'm we made a backup copy of the HTML file, so I'll be able to go back to the to the real uh, the old version once we're done playing here in this video. Anyway, so I had to I I copied the image to the correct location here. So now we just uh, click open the open the folder again here and now we see two pictures one the original picture over here of the current cover and now we see one of the old style cover so we just click on it and hit open now when you look at it instead of showing the thumbnails you might just see a list like this but that's something that you can change how that looks so click on the image you want to insert open and it says uh, image preview actual size 974 by 1480 it has a little button here advanced edit which we could try let's just hit OK and see what happens it says I must supply alternate text okay old cover this is something that uh, for the uh, visually impaired so they can tell what that image is in that page. Let's hit OK. Now you see that this is a giant sized version here and maybe we don't want it to be that big on people's web, pa uh, web pages. What can we do? Well, let's click on the image. The easiest way to resize it here is to click on it. You see these little boxes on the sides. This is similar to what happens if you put an image in Microsoft Word or other programs. If you want to make it smaller, take your mouse and hover over a corner here and then click your left mouse button and we can make it smaller. Hover and reduce the size. So this is a, an easy way to resize an image. There are more fancy ways you can do it as well. And there you go. We've inserted an image into our web page here. No problem. And um, what do we do now? Well, if we're done editing, then we can, you know, again, all these other options, you can change, change the font. You can um, 
delete text, insert text, you can change the background color. Just play with all these options here and you'll be able to uh, customize a web page to make it look like what you want. Now, suppose you want to do something a little more advanced. Suppose you, you want to learn really what HTML is, Hypertext Markup Language. If you want to see it, then click the little tab down here at the bottom that says Source. And what we're looking at here is the computer code that tells what the web browser what to show on the page. So it, it tells what the background color should be and it tells what the text should be. Here says review of regional studies. And what, how should that appear? Strong, emphasis. Um, it also tells us the color. Here is um, one of the pictures, covered.jpg, for example. And so if you need to do something a little more advanced, you can edit the HTML uh, and you can do things a little bit more precisely. For example, suppose you wanted this cover image to be a particular size. Here's where that's controlled. The image is 514 pixels high, 400 pixels wide. You could change those two numbers to be anything, but if you don't change them in the appropriate proportions, you might stretch it to, to look too wide or stretch it to look too tall and skinny, for example. So, uh, but that's the HTML. If you want to go back to the WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get version, click normal here. And when you're done, just click save and close composer. And then what you would want to do is uh, take this new image and this new HTML file and upload it to wherever your web server is so that uh, when people go to your web page, they will see the new version of the index.html uh, file and the, um, and the new image. So you have, you have to copy the new image to that new location as well. Otherwise, people won't be able to see it whenever they load that web page. So I'm going to end this, uh, end this little lesson on basic web, web page editing here. I'll probably add some more in the future. If you have any questions or comments about specific things that you would like to see, please leave them in the comment and uh, questions section below. Thanks. Have fun working on your own web pages.